In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator, and how it can be used to find stocks that may have bullish or bearish momentum. Today, we'll be going through the basics of how the study is actually calculated, some practical examples of how you guys can use it to find both buy and sell signals, and towards the end of the video, we'll also discuss how you guys can create a custom scan to actually find those stocks that meet these buy or sell criteria. To begin with, let's first discuss how the indicator is actually calculated. When looking at the indicator itself, you'll notice that there are two separate lines as well as a histogram in the background. In this example that we're looking at, the MACD line is a blue line and the signal line is a gold line. Now the MACD line itself is calculated by subtracting the long-term EMA from the short-term EMA. So the formula itself would look something like this, MACD equals the 12 period EMA minus the 26 period EMA. The study specifically uses the exponential moving average rather than the simple moving average to place a greater weight on the more recent price action. Now, like I said a second ago, the other line that you're going to see there is the signal line. The signal line is calculated as the nine period EMA of the MACD line. So basically it just acts as an average of the MACD line, making it a much slower moving line. Now, most MACD indicators will also include a histogram in the background, and this histogram reflects the distance between the MACD line and the signal line. So basically, as the MACD line and the signal line separate or diverge, the histogram gets bigger. As the MACD line and the signal line get closer together or converge, the histogram gets smaller. This can then be interpreted as strengthening or weakening momentum in the actual trend. So now that you guys got the calculation for MACD down, let's next go over how you guys would add it to your charts within Thinkorswim. Like all other indicators within the platform, in order to add it, we'll simply come up here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and select that. From there, you guys can then see all of the studies that we have available to us over here on the left hand side. Now, in my case, you can see I already have the MACD indicator over here on the right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get rid of it just so we can get some practice on adding it. I'm then going to come up here to the search box at the very top and go ahead and type in MACD in there. I'm then going to go ahead and find MACD in the list here. Go ahead and select it and hit add selected in the lower left hand corner. From there, as soon as it's added, you can see it's over here on the right hand side as a lower indicator. What I'm going to do next is actually come over here to the settings icon on the far right hand side and go ahead and select that. This settings menu that pops up is actually how we're going to change some of the parameters to either calculate the MACD line itself or just change the overall appearance settings for the lines as well. So looking up here at the top of the settings menu, you can see it's using the 12, 26 and 9 period EMAs, but this is where you guys could change that if you wanted to. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as the default. And instead, I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom and change a couple of the appearance settings. Looking here, you can see I currently have the value line selected, which is actually the MACD line. Looking here, you can see I'm currently using a blue color and I'm actually gonna widen that line out just a little bit, make it easier to see. The next thing I'm gonna do is come up here to the average line, AVG line, which is actually the signal line. Looking down below here, I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to a brighter color that's easier to see and go ahead and widen that out as well. Now, the very last thing I'm gonna do is come up here to the diff box, and this is actually our histogram in the background. Looking down below here, we can see that anytime the MACD line is below the signal line, it's gonna be red here on the histogram. Anytime the MACD line is above the signal line, the histogram will be green. Now, in my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and change these slightly. I'm actually gonna make these blue right here both the same color and I'm gonna make these ones the same color of red as well and you guys don't have to do that that's just my personal preference if I can find it here and now that I'm happy with that I'm happy with the parameters we've set I'm happy with the color settings I'm simply gonna come down here and select OK and select OK one more time so now that we did that we can actually see the MACD populates as a lower study right below my chart as I mentioned before the MACD line itself is currently a blue line the signal line is a gold line and the histogram in the background is either blue or red depending on if the MACD is above or below the signal line. Like we also mentioned, the size of that histogram is going to depend on the separation between the two lines themselves. Okay, so now that we've added the study to our chart, we've gone over the calculation, let's next go over how you guys could actually use this to find both your buy or sell indications on the study. Now the very first method for using MACD to find a buy or sell signal is using a MACD crossover. Whenever that MACD line crosses above or below that signal line, it can be interpreted by traders as a buy or sell signal. So looking through Apple here as the example, I think we can find a few examples of this happening. And looking back here in the October timeframe right here, it looks like October 14th, you can see here when the MACD line crossed above the signal line. If I were to go ahead and highlight that time period, 
this would be our potential bull signal or buy signal for Apple. If we were to then come over here to the right a little bit and taking a look right here at the December timeframe, looks like December 17th, we can then see when the MACD line crossed back below the signal line. That would be our potential sell signal or bear signal if I go ahead and highlight that. So we may look at selling Apple right here. Now, just taking a look at one more example, if we came back over here to the right, I can see another crossover right here on March 18th. If I go ahead and highlight that, that would be another bull signal because it's when the MACD line crossed above the signal line. But that is the very first example of how you guys could use the MACD to actually find potential buys or sells on the stock chart. Now, the second way is a little bit more confusing, but it can still be used to find potential buy or sell signals, and that's through either bullish or bearish divergence. A bullish divergence would appear when the MACD forms two rising lows that is mirrored by two falling lows on the actual stock price. Now, that's a bit confusing to describe, so let's actually pull up a stock ticker, and let me show you a practical example. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Disney here. So now that I've got the Disney chart pulled up, remember what I'm looking for is a higher low in the MACD as well as a lower low on the actual stock chart during the same time period. Looking here on the chart, I think I can see it around the December timeframe. So let me go ahead and draw a trend line so you guys can see it as well. I can see a higher low on the MACD as well as a lower low on the actual stock price for Disney. So this right here would be a potential bullish divergence. And if I were to highlight that second crossover on the MACD, this would be our buy signal. So again, what we were looking for was a higher low on the MACD and a lower low on the stock price. Now, moving on from that, the next one we're going to go over is the bearish divergence, and it's the exact opposite of this. The bearish divergence would appear when the MACD forms two falling highs that is then mirrored by two rising highs on the stock price. So if we were to pull up SPY as the example, let me go ahead and pull up SPY up here. Looking down below, remember I'm looking for a lower low on the MACD and a higher high on the actual chart itself. So looking down here again in the November, December timeframe, I think I see it. So let me go ahead and draw the trend line for you guys so you can see it as well. There is the lower high on the MACD. And then coming up here on the chart itself, again, we've got the high right here, followed by a higher high on the actual stock chart for the same exact time period. Looking here would be our example of a bearish divergence. And if I were to highlight that crossover, this right here would be our potential sell signal. Now, of course, none of these studies, none of these indicators are going to be absolutely perfect, but you guys can use this to find your potential buy or sell signals and find maybe bullish or bearish momentum in the actual stock price. Okay, so now that we understand how the MACD is calculated, a little bit more about how it works and how you guys can use it to find potential buys and sells, Let's next go over how you guys could create a custom scan within Thinkorswim to actually find those stocks that meet this criteria. So in order for us to do that, what we're going to do is come up here to the scan tab at the very top and make sure we have the stock hacker selected. Now the scan we create in today's video is going to be specifically focused on finding those stocks that have had a recent MACD crossover within the past day. It's also going to focus on only those that have had a bullish crossover or a buy signal. So in order for us to do that, what we're going to do is come over here to the far right hand side and select add a filter. We're then going to come down and select a study filter. As soon as we click on that, you're going to notice that ADX crossover pops up automatically and all we have to do is go ahead and click on that. This will then open up a drop down menu with a bunch of defaults that Thinkorswim automatically makes for us. But what we're going to do is come down to the very bottom and select custom. Now this custom menu that pops up, if I go ahead and drag it down so you guys can see it a little bit better is gonna allow us to create our own custom scanners. Now at the moment, you can see that ADX crossover is still in here, so I first need to go ahead and delete that out of there. Now that we've got a blank slate, what I'm gonna do is come down here to the lower left-hand corner and select add a condition. This will then open up the conditions window where we can now create our custom scanner. Now remember, in my case, what I'm looking for is the MACD line crossing above the signal line within the past day. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to select a condition. It's gonna be a study condition. I'm then going to come up here to the little search box and go ahead and type in MACD. You can see it there right at the top, so we'll go ahead and select that. Looking down below, you can see I'm currently using the value line, which is the MACD line. And right below that, you can see it's using the default parameters, and we're going to go ahead and leave that be. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and specify what we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for it to be crossing above the signal line. So we'll select crosses above here. I'm then going to come over here to select a condition. It's going to be a study condition once again. I'm going to come up here and search for MACD again, click on it in the list. And then the only thing I need to change is change this from the MACD line to the average line or the signal line in this case. 
So again, what I'm saying is I'm looking for stocks where the MACD line has crossed above the signal line. And in this case, it's happening in the last day. So right here, if you guys wanted to maybe widen out these parameters, you were okay with the crossover happening in the past two days or five days, this is where you could change it. For me personally, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as one bar. So the crossovers happened in the past day. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna come down here and hit save. We can then see the script written out right up here at the top. And since I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay down in the lower right hand corner. So now that we've got our filter made, all we have to do is come up here and hit the scan tab. And now only those companies that meet all of our criteria will show up in this list down below. However, looking down here, you can see there are way too many results. At the moment, there are 361 companies that meet all of our criteria. And I'm sure a lot of these companies, I would have no interest in trading. And a lot of them don't actually have any liquidity. A lot of these guys don't even trade. So what I'm going to do next is actually add a couple basic filters to just narrow down this list a little bit better. Coming up here to the top, you can see there are already three filters in here. So let's just go ahead and use those. Come up here and find last. I'm then going to set the minimum as 10 bucks because I don't trade any stocks that are trading for less than 10 bucks a share. I'm then going to come over here to where it says volume. I'll leave that be, but I'm going to set the minimum as 100,000 shares. That simply means at the time that I run the scan, the company had to have traded at least 100,000 shares so far. The next one I'm going to do is come over here to percent change, and I'm going to go ahead and flip that over to, let's say, market cap in millions. We'll go ahead and put 1,000 millions as the minimum or a billion dollars. So no super tiny companies will pop up in our results. And then finally, the very last filter I'm going to add is by coming up here to add a filter. It's going to be another study filter. You can then see that ADX crossover pops up once again because it is the default study. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Looking down below in these pre-made filter options, I'm actually going to use one of these. But in this case, it's going to be the pre-made volume filter. And it's specifically going to be the average volume filter. Now, in my case, I am going to leave it as the default. And if we look at it for just a second, what this is saying is that on average, this company trades over 1 million shares a day, at least looking back the past 50 days. So hopefully this helps to weed out those really illiquid companies that don't typically trade over a million shares a day. I know that's not a crazy amount of liquidity, but it's decent. So now that we've got those very basic filters added in here, let's just come down here to the scan tab and hit scan once again. All right, so looking down here in the list, we can see it's been refined quite a bit further. There were over 300 results before, and now there's only nine that actually match all of our criteria. If we wanted to double check these results, let's go ahead and take a closer look at a couple of them just to make sure it's working correctly. So right here, we can see that DWAC meets one of our criteria. So I'm gonna come back up here to the charts. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the symbol for that guy. Looking down here on the MACD, if I zoom in a little bit, we can see that there was a recent MACD crossover above the signal line. So it does meet our scan criteria in that regard. So that one makes the cut. Let's go back to the scan tab. Looking below that one, we can also see that JD meets our criteria. So let's go back up to the charts page and throw in JD up there. If I were to come down and zoom in on the current time period a little bit more, we can see here that there was a crossover today as well on JD. But I think you guys can see how helpful these scans can be. Rather than wasting your time just looking for stocks that match your criteria, this scanner will only show you those stocks that you might be ready to place a trade on right then and there. Now, finally, the very last thing I'll show you guys in here is that once you guys save these scanners, they automatically become watch lists that you guys can use in the future. So let's say we like this one. We're going to come up here to the three little lines in the upper right hand corner. I'm then going to hit save scan query. From there, I'll just go ahead and give it a name as uh, let's say MACD crossover here and go ahead and hit save. Now that I've saved it, I can always open it up as a watch list even over here on my side panel. So looking right here, let's say I wanted to add a watch list below this one. Come down here and hit the plus sign. Looking here in the gadget menu, I'll go ahead and select another watch list. Looking here, you can see it added an indices watch list, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that. I'm then gonna come up here to the very top where it says personal, because this is where all of my watch lists or all of my scanners are stored. Looking towards the right there, we can see the watch list or scanner that we just made, MACD crossover. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So now that I've got that scanner selected, looking down here in the lower left-hand corner is our MACD crossover scanner. So all of these companies that show up here have had a recent MACD crossover within the past day. And this watch list is gonna be constantly updating. Every three to four minutes, it's like you're hitting the scan button. If I were then to link this watch list to my chart, I could then very quickly go through all of these companies just by clicking on them and then find something I actually wanna place a trade on. 
But I think you guys get the idea the scanner is an amazing tool on here. It can really help you guys find some things to place trades on. But hopefully that gives you guys all a better understanding of the MACD indicator, how it can be used in a practical application, and how you guys can create a scan within Thinkorswim to actually find some things to trade. If you guys have any additional questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that really wraps up everything I wanted to cover on the MACD. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.